Let's do this. All right, so here we are. Welcome, 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 everyone. We got a couple streams going on. We got the great Peter Moss here, and I am holding, by the way, the new Peter Moss flight ukulele, which is, has this really cool burst on it, Peter's name on it, and Peter is live with us right now. So everybody that's here, uh, we got a Zoom call going on. That's with all our Platinum members at ukatepros.com. Absolutely fantastic community of people there. And then we wanted to open this up to everybody as well, and that's why we're streaming it here to YouTube. So all my YouTube people, make sure you throw something in the chat so we know that you are here. All right, we want to be able to see that you are here. Say hi to Peter uh, as well. So, all right. Uh, my computer died yesterday, last night. It's totally dead. It won't even turn on. So uh, I am using my wife's computer. So hopefully uh, everything's okay. You can hear me okay and see me okay. And and uh, and it's not about me today because it's all about Peter. Uh, so anyway, let's 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 do this. And sorry, there's gonna be my wife has got her notifications turned on, and it's just gonna be like dinging the whole time. So I don't know if I can uh, turn that off quickly. I, I usually don't have any any notifications turned on that ding like that, but my wife is like ding, ding, ding. So you're, we might have to put up with it for today. I'm trying to find a notifications tab here, and I don't see it here on the Mac. Uh, I don't know where there's a general notifications thing for this. So let me see here. So anyway, we're gonna have to just we're gonna have to roll with it for now. All right. So here we are. I'm going to bring on the one and only, the great Peter Moss has joined us today for this live Q&A. Uh, I'm very thankful to have him. I'm going to make him a co-host. And you should be able to change your view, at least the people that are on Zoom, if you want to see the speaker. I think you can do side by side. I think there's a few various things that you can do for that. So first and foremost, I'm going to make Peter a co-host. So co-host, so Peter, you can go ahead and accept that and or re, uh, unmute yourself if you don't mind all right all right can we are you here with me peter or i can ask you to unmute there we go hey here we go there we go how hey, are you i'm good how are you good fantastic yeah i've been really looking forward to this since you announced it and say and uh hello to all my new friends Yes. Well, I think I think a lot of you, a lot of people already know who you are, Peter, but uh, uh, and probably a lot of people follow you in, in various ways with your career. But uh, anyway, oh, somebody said, OK, uh, but anyway, I appreciate you being here. Why don't you go ahead and, uh, and introduce yourself, introduce who you are and uh, and, and what you're most excited about right now, because I kind of have a feeling. I know what yeah, it is. Absolutely. Well, I've been playing for um, 52 years. I uh, started in 1969 and uh, to the present day, I'm still learning. Um, it's been a, a great journey so far. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you must know everything. Well, I don't. Uh, every day there's something new I'm trying out, always experimenting with things. Um, and uh, in the last couple of years, had an association with flight and uh, they were kind enough um, to actually supply me uh, and everybody else should you wish to purchase one from you like the pros <laughs> my very own signature ukulele um, and it's on a concert size and it's absolutely wonderful um, i've been on tour recently in germany in poland uh, and in both places they've got this signature uke as well uh, and I, what I can say is uh, out of the box, when you just like take one, you know, uh, it works perfectly. There was no setup required. It's just absolutely wonderful, even from the factory. So I'm so happy with this. Yes, I, I agree with you. And um, and I've been doing I've been with flight uh, as a as a partner as well for a long time. Um, and so what happened is that these were very hard to get, by the way, Peter, just so you know. So these aren't um, very easy to find. So actually through flight uh, and I have my connection through flight. And when I had my last shipment come in, I had to, and which by the way, I have to bring all the way over from, from their factories. Um, right. And, uh, and uh, what people don't understand is how crazy shipping is. Yeah. So like you really, like, I don't even, I'm not going to give you any numbers, but trust me to get like six boxes shipped, from overseas is 
crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of money. So, uh, but it was important for me, Peter, to have your model uh, here with me. So I did get some of these available. Um, so Flight is a great company. They make, what, I, what I've noticed about them is they make great quality ukes, solid wood ukes, pickups in them. Uh, you know, they use the nice strings, the nice through the body bridge, but the, the, the value is incredible for what what you get in these ukuleles why why or how why why did you go with flight or how did that partnership even start it happened by accident uh, i was playing in germany uh, near to a town called essen and there was a ukulele festival there called rukulele and um part of the festival was an exhibition room and different manufacturers had got their stands there and as I walked in, there was a very impressive looking uh, array of instruments on the right hand side. And uh, there was a lady there who I didn't know at the time. Uh, and she said, do you want to try one? And she gave me a, a tenor uke. Um, and it looked very much like the uh, the spirit, which I ended up with. But it was a tenor size. And I played it. I said, you know, this is a really nice instrument. But for tenor, I just cannot play a tenor. I, I need a concert. So she said, guess what? We make it in a concert as well. So I played it and fell in love with it. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, and we chatted for about half an hour. And I, I made some polite excuses in that, you know, when you first walk in uh, to, a, to a, a stall and you try an instrument for the first time and you think, that is great. But what you haven't done is you haven't tried all the others as well. So I said to her, you know, look, um, I could just do with seeing some of these other people some of my friends also who dealers and uh, so we parted some company and i went all the way around probably for two hours in this exhibition room and on the way out i went back to the flight stand just to pick up this uke again um, and it played so nice again you know i thought well it wasn't just one of those first impression things it was absolutely fantastic and uh, she says, well, I'm the CEO of Flight. My name's Juliana. Would you like to become a flight artist? And it was like, wow, <laughs> I didn't know who she was, you know. And uh, so we uh, get, kept that relationship going. Um, and I was going to be so busy in 2020 with Australia and America, Canada, all over Europe. And then, of course, COVID hit. So uh, the part of the deal when you become a flight artist is to obviously uh, promote the ukuleles. Uh, so I did a load of things online instead. So if you check out my uh, YouTube channel, you see there's a load of free stuff on there. And the instrument I'm playing is the one prior to be getting this one, which is the Flight Concert Spirit. Out of the blue, she contacted me and said, um, we'd like to build you a, a special instrument you know, to your specifications. So I said, well, wow, I mean, that, that's fantastic. So we talked about various woods, finishes, blah, 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 blah. And all the time I was thinking this is going to be like a one-off custom uke just built for me in association with flight. Then it turned out, she says, oh, no, no, we want to make it a signature uke and we want to actually sell it to, to everybody around the world. Well, I, could, I nearly fell over. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, I'll be absolutely honest with you. There was a tear in my eye when she said that because I didn't expect it. It was a, a bolt out of the blue. So she uh, sent me a prototype, um, which was great. Uh, and was one or two things we spoke about. Could we alter this? Could we do this? Could we do that? Um, and then it ended up with what um, you've got in your store now and what I've got with me today. So this is the final thing. And initially it was going to be all black. Um, and we were going to probably see a little bit of the grain uh, because, um, you know, if, if, if you have it too black, it's just like too much. You know, there's no, there's no sort of style there. So Primos, uh, who is um, Juliana's partner, basically said, what if we were to do a sort of black on the outsides and then move it towards the insides and make it go towards a sort of gray? And that way we can show off the grain on the top in the spruce wood. And I said, that is a fantastic idea. So uh, then we nicknamed it the Moonburst, you know, because Les Paul uh, with their guitars had a thing called the Sunburst. So this being black and going to silver, we thought it was more like moonlight. So we called it Moonburst. So it just happened overnight. I love that. I love that. And I actually have something. Um, and that makes a lot of sense, Peter. And, I'm, and we're going to have you play here in just a second, if that's OK. <laughs> um, so I got. I think we got four of these in and one of them peter is doesn't have the burst like this it is all very dark ah right and so okay. that makes a lot of sense because we were wondering why 
why was this one so different than the other? So maybe it was one of the, the earlier ones they were they were doing um, before they went to the burr. So, uh, well, that'd be very rare to have that one. So buy that one. Whoever's watching this, buy that one. Buy that, that'll, be worth, that, that'll be worth thousands. In this. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a VIP one. That's a VIP one. Um, so all right, I got a lot more questions, but uh, we got a great handout we're going to work on in a little while. Yeah. Uh, anywhere, again, if you're joining us, make sure that all the YouTube people throw something in the chat because I'm doing this and Peter uh, for you guys so you can be a part of these Q and A's that we've been doing. Uh, uh, that we've been doing at the uh, uh, every week for I think of almost six years. So, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Peter play a little something on his uh, signature uke, and then we'll continue the conversation. How's that work for you, Peter? Sounds great. Just a quick right. sound check with you. Can you hear that? Nice. Okay. Yep. Here we go. All right. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. Holy cow, man! <laughs> now, now, just so everyone knows, uh, Peter's in the UK, so he's it's not early morning like it is here in Southern California. Because Peter, I can't get my hand moving that fast this early, so I don't know how you did it. <laughs> but fantastic. Um, what was uh, uh, before? I want to know about your influences growing up um sure what what why the uke was it and it was it the guitar was it something else that you you got led to the uke or was it the uke from the beginning so tell us a little bit about that journey that's a great question okay how long have we got yeah, we're good we're good <laughs> we'll do the shortened yeah. version okay. we're good uh, my late father um he played the acoustic guitar and uh, it was great whenever uh, friends or family used to come around uh, after after dinner, he'd always get the guitar out and play a few tunes, sing along, play a little bit of melody and that. Uh, and growing up watching my father do this, you know, it was kind of uh, one day I want to have a go. I really want to do it. And um, I guess I would be about seven years old and um, I convinced my dad to let me have a go. Now, the problem was uh, the guitar was kind of so high and I was so high <laughs> so it was bigger than me to start with of course it had six strings my tiny hands when i was like seven years old couldn't get round the width of the neck yeah they couldn't they weren't strong enough to press down the strings and i couldn't stretch enough to actually play the chords cleanly i just could not do it it was impossible uh, and i was very very upset and felt very defeated However, my dad had come across a ukulele and he knew there were similarities. Now, some of you may know this, some of you may not. If I had a guitar around my neck now, rather than the ukulele, uh, and I was to put a bar across the fifth position, okay, uh, the bottom four strings on the guitar are G, C, E, A. 
believe it or not. Yeah. So the idea was he would show me some chord shapes, although it was four strings and not six. He would show me some chord shapes. I could get sort of uh, confident with those. And then when uh, times were where I could uh, stretch and I could press down, I had the grip. I would uh, put the ukulele down and carry on with the guitar, which was the, the idea to start with. So uh, what happened was he bought me and my parents bought me uh, for my eighth birthday, my very first ukulele and uh, the journey has just continued so uh, so really i didn't want to play ukulele i wanted to play the guitar but my father thought that i would ditch it after about four or five years and um, never pick it up again guess what <laughs> i kept going <laughs> so <laughs> unless you, unless you're wondering uh, i do actually play guitar as well i did pick up guitar when i was uh, 16 17 around that sort of time and uh, I had uh, probably 30 years with guitar. And uh, more recently, uh, I'm talking 2014, is when I sort of came back again on the uke, started putting things now on YouTube and Facebook had just started. There was no Instagram at that time, but social media basically was there. So the things I'd learned when I was a kid, I was starting to do again from 2014. Um, and what happened, um, there was a guy from the States who you probably know a lot of you called Little Rev or Lil Rev. And uh, he lived uh, near Chicago and uh, he uh, asked me to the Milwaukee Ukulele Festival. This was like one year after I restarted again. Um, then I played Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I got home, I was invited to play in Australia and I've been, since been back five times to Australia. Then Europe started later. So then into Europe and everything and it's kind of, kind of grown ever since. So, so that a couple of things that are interesting to me about that is uh, the ukulele when you were eight, was that something that was prevalent around your area? Like it was just right. like the, the ukulele, the, yeah, the, I mean, the I mean, music I mean, store down the street had it or, or, or was that hard to get? Now, I meant to answer that part of the question. Um, there were music shops that did have ukuleles in their front window as well as guitars. And the big influence um, was a, a, a comedian during the sort of war years um, called George Formby. Uh, and he lived on the Lancashire coast of the UK. And uh, a lot of people would know the ukulele by association, by name or watching him on films um, of playing the ukulele. But he also played the banjulele as well. Uh, which is more sort of famous for um so so he was sort of one influence uh, listening to records of his and watching his films and everything but then um i'd say when i was 10 i came across a guy in america and uh, his nickname was the wizard of the strings and i'm talking about the legendary the great mr roy smack and what he could do with a ukulele was unbelievable. And watching as a child in amazement and doing all these crazy things. So not only was he a brilliant player, uh, but he used to put the uke behind his neck. He used to blow down the sound hole. He was doing all these crazy things. And if you check out, if you don't know him, Roy Smeck, S-M-E-C-K, it's in black and white, but just look at some of the stuff that he did. So that was a big influence there. Uh, but my father, he took me once once he'd shown me his chords and things that he knew, he took me to another person and then he took me to another person and then another person and it grew and grew and grew. Yeah, and that's that that's incredible. Yeah, if, if you if you no one here, especially the younger guys, if you haven't heard of George Formby or Roy Schmeck, I mean, definitely. I mean, they're the they're they're so, so influential and they were so good. And they were so good at doing it like live and on camera and in front of audiences. It's almost incredible when you look at some of that footage of what they were able to accomplish and at fast tempos. And yeah, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, and what was that ukulele? What was your very first ukulele? Do you remember the brand or the size? Oh, no, uh, <laughs> there was no name on it that anybody would know. In fact, the, the fretboard itself was molded plastic and it had two screws in. <laughs> there and there to hold it to the, the the sort of wooden neck it was it was it was awful but i loved it you know and um i'd, I'd say 12 months later my dad and mother could see that i needed something a little bit more upmarket so then we got into things like aria um a, a friend of mine had got a martin and it was just wonderful to play that 
Uh, but before long, uh, I was playing concerts and things. Uh, I was singing along with my sister. Uh, and uh, talking of George Formby, um, we would use, we couldn't sing his songs. Reason being, a lot of them had a lot of double meanings and it wasn't right for kids to be seen actually singing these songs. So, but I could do a lot of the things that he did with his right hand. Would you like me to demonstrate what he would do with his right hand? Of yeah. course, of okay. course, we would love that. Excellent. So if you can see this, okay. So basically, you have this pattern going down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, down. And the sort of timing of that would be one, two, three, four. That would be at one bar. So often what he would do, he'd play sort of four straight beats. But then he used to do a thing called a flick. Uh, and that was instead of going down, up, down, down, up, down, down. He went down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. Now then, listen what a difference that makes. <laughs> to that, he also added in what was the triple, uh, which is basically three things. The way I do it is down with the finger, up with the thumb, and then up with the finger. There are different ways of doing that, but I do it that way. But it's knowing where to actually fit it in, which is the secret. So what I'm going to do is play a little solo typical of what for me would play. This is taken from a tune from many years ago uh, called When I'm Cleaning Windows. So this is the solo from it. Here we go. <laughs> so that's all there is to it really yeah, it, yeah no all right everyone's got to do that you got three minutes three minutes for everybody <laughs> to, to get that done um yeah absolutely incredible um and and like i was saying they, they were I mean they were doing that stuff standing up on tv on film you know yeah. in front of a bunch of people so it's like you know the, you throw that into the mix too it's absolutely incredible um, all right, so everybody here on YouTube, let me see some fire in the chat. Some fire in the chat, everybody. Let's go, let's go. I want to thank thanks to great Peter Moss for allowing allowing us to stream this uh, to you. Um, so yeah, if you haven't, if you don't follow Peter, make sure to follow him on his Instagram is uh, ukulele underscore Peter underscore Moss. We'll put that in the chat for you. Um, and then Peter, uh, and obviously we're not done. I'm just, I'm just trying to let people know where else can people, when they research you, find some more information about you. So YouTube uh, is the best resource because, of course, everything's free there as well. Um, and uh, there's all sorts of things. And it's in if you go onto the site and then you'll see playlists. If you click playlists, there's uh, different ukulele solos uh, of different levels. Then there's things for ukulele groups. Then there's something for the more advanced players. So if you literally go through the playlists in the drop downs, you'll find that everything is laid out there. And in some cases, I'm using two cameras where you've got zooms in on what my hands are doing, as well as a talking head picture in picture type of thing. So YouTube is a, a good resource as well. Uh, awesome. I do, I do run a, a thing through Patreon. Who doesn't? <laughs> and uh, that's for more sort of advanced students uh, who want to get a little bit more one on one um uh and again i'll send you the link to that in case anybody wants to check that out okay yeah yeah for sure um, and i put the instagram it's, it's uh not underscore but at ukulele dot peter dot moss and i put That's that it. in the chat for everybody i'll do that again so make sure to go follow follow him over there uh if you haven't and also the his patreon page we'll get the link to that but it's it's probably if you just go to patreon.com and search peter moss i'm sure it will uh i'm sure it will come up um before we get to the, I know you have a little handout for us as well, and um, uh, I'll, I'll get that. So um, how am I going to get that? You you email it to me and see if I can find it. Um, uh, as far as uh, 
festivals this this summer are you back you know are you back out on the road a lot more and and more opportunities now that kind of things are loosening up a little bit sure the last eight weeks has been uh poland italy germany and going to the czech republic it's in september i'm hopefully getting to australia before the end of the year hopefully also going to be in uh, texas uh sometime in october uh, we're just discussing that at the minute that will be houston and austin as well so yeah things things are beginning to happen again all right uh so i i was able to find find your email because without too much struggle again i'm on my wife's computer so things aren't as good as they normally are uh but anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna put this in the chat why don't you talk before i put this on the screen yeah. uh talk to us a little bit about um this uh canon and c that you got for us sure uh yeah so it's it's taken from the canon which was originally written in d but it's just a lot easier for us tune g c e a for us to play it in c um and what i wanted to have a look at was um doing it in a sort of basic format and then what can we do to make it just that little bit more you know a bit, bit more advanced a bit more polished okay advanced is probably the wrong word uh, but uh, it's just going to take a little bit of work for some of you. Um, others might just drop on it. So would you like me to go through this with you now? Why don't you, can you just play it a little bit uh, and then we'll, we'll share yeah. the screen so people know what they're going to hear. So basically, if you follow it on the sheet, it says two under each one. That's just going to be two strums. So on the top line we're looking at now, so we have... That sort of idea. Oops. Yeah. So what if you were to change that to basically what's called inversion? So instead of playing the C here, we could play a C he. And it sounds so much more pretty. The G, which is in the second one, I can play here. The A minor, I can play here. And the E minor, I can make an E minor seven and so on. So so I could take it from this. like this and when we get to it you can change the finger pick we can go That's where we're going to end up hopefully before the end of today all right so i'm, I'm muting myself when you're playing so i don't you don't get disturbed um, all right so let me see if i can get this up on the screen okay. um here for you and let you all let me know if this if you can see this it's showing a warning sign here uh -oh. oh no no <laughs> oh, okay it doesn't want me to it doesn't even want me. Oh, doesn't even want me to share my screen. That's funny. Um, okay. Has everybody got a sheet? Yeah, everyone. Not not the YouTube people, but yeah, everyone else should have it. So. Okay. Okay. So for right. those that are live with a sheet, okay. But I'll also show the people who haven't got a sheet. If you look at my left hand, what we're going to do. All right. Are we ready? Okay. So we're going to play the first chord that everybody played, okay, which is a C major. If you'll stay muted, okay. So just two strums on the C, okay. Then we're going to go to a chord of G, G major. Oh, got it. And the next one is an A minor. And the next one in sequence is an E minor. Now, if you've not played this before, this is like a diagonal pattern, yeah? So... That is that one, the E minor. And then we're going to go to F, then to C, back to F, and then to G. So if you're writing this down, uh, if you're watching uh, on, on YouTube, ah, here we go. We've got it. <laughs> Can it move over a bit? Look at that. Fantastic. All right. I got it. I'm hey. rocking. I'm rocking. Hey. <laughs> Rocking all over the world. Fantastic. So, two on C, two on G, two on A minor, two on E minor, two on F, two on C, two on F, and 
two on G. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to play all together, and I'm going to count four in. We're going to do a little bit slower, but let's see if we can get the whole thing in time. Here we go then. One, two, three, four. Should we do that again? I think we should. All right. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four. Now what happens with the canon basically it, it repeats itself it goes over and over and over again and uh, if you're playing with somebody else and one of you does the chords which we've just played together somebody else could play some melody now what what notes can you actually play well all of these chords fit the c major scale and our c major scale sounds like this And of course, it can go further than that. Go. So, so basically, I'm still doing the C major scale, but I'm going higher up the neck. So you've got all those notes that you can play. So you could literally go sort of. And so on and so forth i'm just making that up but literally any of these notes of the c major scale or higher up the neck as well okay so that's one way of doing it but one of the things i like to do especially when playing melody is to use what's called an inversion now an inversion sounds very complicated and for those of you that's not gone past the third or fourth fret before now is the time okay because what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble basically the basic chords down here so with our c major okay now we're going to now use a g major shape like we played in the first bit yeah but we're going to take it up to the seventh position or seventh fret okay and the seventh is got a little dot on it normally the fifth and the seventh and the tenth and the twelfth have got dots on so you take it up to the seventh fret now you might say to me peter now listen you've got something on the seventh but you've also got something on the eighth fret now i know that okay but my index finger is the key to the whole thing so later on when i mention that something's on the fourth fret the fifth fret the seventh fret it's where my index finger is it doesn't matter what the others are doing so what we're going to do then is take that g shape up to here listen to that that's going to be our first chord so instead of going which you've got above we're going to go could you all do that one two three four fantastic okay now the next one uh, is derived from a shape which is basically an e flat but we're going to take that e flat up to the fifth position now you can either look at me what i'm doing uh, here or you can look on the screen itself and see that i've got uh, this is on the fifth fret so therefore that's the index finger so it's that shape on the fifth fret and these two are on the seventh fret should sound like that does yours sound like that if you're getting a few dead sounds like just add a little bit more pressure okay so this is the fun bit now so so our first chord that we have in the more advanced version was that one then we've got to think about how do i get from there to there well it's down to those three p's isn't it practice 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 but you've got this sheet yeah so if you forget it tomorrow you still got the sheet or of course you can play the video back again can't you okay what's the next shape 
So the next shape is derived from a G minor, which it looks like that. Yeah, but we're not going to play it there. We're going to play the G minor shape, but we're going to take it up to the third position. OK, so third position because you've got it. That's where my index finger is. OK, so so either have a look at me here on the screen or for those that you've got a printout, look at your printout. Now, even though I'm only covering with my fingers three strings, I want you to do all of the four strings. All right, let's backtrack then. So the first chord was this one. The second one was this one. The third one was this one. Now, don't worry if you don't get it all right perfect now. You will uh, with a bit of practice. So again, we have... Okay, let's move on. The next one is an E minor seventh. Uh, and for those of you that uh, know and refer to this shape as the Hawaiian D7, we're not going to play that there. We're going to move everything across the strings. So you could use the same fingers as you would if you were playing a Hawaiian D7, but it's across the strings. So that has the name of E minor seventh. So let's do the four chords now. So we have... Okay, so if I count four in really slowly, let's see if we can do together uh, two on each. One, two, three, four. If you can do that already, well done you. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four. Let's move on. Now, uh, the next one is F plus C. And guess what, ladies and gents, that's what it is. I want you to play an F with the normal fingers you would for F. And with your pinky, play a C at the same time. F plus C. Makes sense. Yeah, OK. So F plus C for two. And then take off the F, but leave the C there. Did you notice I'm playing the C with the pinky? Critical. Then back to the F plus C. So put the F back on. And then we're going to finish just like the one above, the basic one where it was in G. OK, so those last two bars sound like this. OK, right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to try and do from the beginning of the advanced. After four, are we ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. again okay and that is it so we did a basic version then we took those basic chords and we turned turned them into uh, a, a more sort of advanced state okay so that is uh, what I'd like to well, we've done it. We presented it today. Uh, the Canon in C advanced. Now, now that was awesome. Yeah. And, and it, we've been working on inversion. As a matter of fact, we did a chord inversion workshop not too long ago um, on the ukulele and the guitar. But taking, you know, so, so help people understand what you're doing here, Peter, which is taking these chord shapes that we may know somewhere down here and moving them up the, right. the neck. Now, you have a... Uh, now that we've gone over that and you played it at the beginning, if you could play it at the end, and because I know you were doing some variations on it, um, and then also there was a picking pattern that you have at the bottom. Could you could you explain that picking pattern before you exactly. play it here? Yeah, yeah. So so basically, uh, it says one over four. What does that mean? It basically means what I want you to do is pinch these two together. So play them together. Yeah, not separately together. Uh, so if you look at your first shape. Of the advanced so we're going to do one and four just like that simple so so don't go let it ring 
okay? Then we've got to follow it with string three, then follow it with string two, then follow it with string one. Okay, so one and four together. Three, two, one. Okay, so if I count four in, let's see if we can do... Ready? One, two, three, four. Let's do, let's do a few together. One, two, three, four. Now then, all you do basically is change the chord. This doesn't change, so we can go... Now, when I did it initially, I was going a little bit faster but I've done exactly what I've just shown you there. So we have... And now you might want to do on the end of that bar, which takes you back up. what I was doing that's what I'm talking about right there that's hey. what I'm talking about <laughs> and it's cool it, it's cool how much changing the voicings really makes such a huge difference in the sound oh. of it and that that variation and your audience you know they'll hear that stuff when you do that you know they'll be doing whatever and then they'll you the, one of the like the you know that like that E minor seven chord. You know it like really pops. You know yeah. when people hear it. You know. Um, so anyway, that's a great one. And what I'll do for uh, all the all our members here. So all I'm all the platinum members. Um, uh, I'll, I'll I'm gonna and I'll and I'll send it to you, Peter. I'll, I'll notate that for you. Okay, we'll put that in a nice little sheet with cool. the with the picking patterns, and we'll send that out to you. So um, anyway, let me let me check in with everybody. I'm gonna make sure uh, everyone's cool. So here on YouTube. Uh, Y'all enjoying it? We got over uh, over forty five people been watching this. Um, and Peter, I I didn't even ask you this, so uh, but we are doing a part two of a beginning music workshop today, a little bit later into the, today. Um, and uh, I haven't asked you this, so I don't want to put you on the spot. But um, I I stress music reading as a very important aspect to uh, everyone's playing as far as breaking away from the tab. Uh, it really helps you with your eye hand coordination, learning the fretboard. Uh, timing is really helps too, because when you're reading rhythms and you're reading notes and you're using a metronome or a backing track, it really helps. How, how is your music reading or, or what is the importance you think of music reading? Uh, it's good, but the, the one of the issues that I have personally with it is uh, it can make a person sort of rigid to it. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. and, and um it's great to for learning a piece don't get me wrong you've got to start somewhere haven't you yeah but the sooner you can get rid of that bit of paper and concentrate on what your hands are doing your right and left hand rather than worrying about oh, it's that note so that must be a c that means i need to press this string here and so and so forth it's it's for me uh, i've done everything myself with ear but for my patron students, I have my own little system. So uh, you'll have to check that out to be, uh, I can't explain it in five minutes, but it's 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 just another way of uh, uh, not playing notation, not playing tab, but you will see exactly on a bit of paper, which string to pick, how long for, and that sort of thing. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, and we stress this too, this idea that we gotta get the music off the page at some point, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. we learn it, we got it, but then, and. And what we do here is we do a lot of challenges. Matter of fact, we just had a blues challenge 
that we had last week that we announced a winner. Um, and, and so the feel, it's really where the feel comes into the piece of music is when you get it off this paper, get it into your hands and your head, and then you, uh, then you can put a little bit more emotion into it. Exactly. I mean, talking of blues, I uh, just in C with C, F and G or G7. Yeah. All those can be replaced, you know, so you can have a sort of. Yeah, there's so many things you can do with three chords, you know, um, so that was blues. Yeah, we yeah. Were, we were talking earlier about uh, one of my influences, which was Mr. Roy Schmeck. I don't know how much time we've got left, but I would like to, before we finished, is uh, play you a piece which he really inspired me with. And I was playing this when I was 12 years old. Wow. <laughs> That, that was like two two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, right, ago. right. <laughs> would, would you like me to share that with you? Oh, of course. We love that, actually. Okay. So uh, now you've got to remember, um, it's a long time ago when I was 12. So I'd like to just do a sort of shortened version. Is that okay? Is that all right? Just nod. Yeah. Okay. Here's a shortened version. You ready? Thank you. Woo! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here we go. I'm talking about oh man Woo! there's a fire at come on now throw that in the chat give me some fire everybody so that was uh incredible uh lawrence by the way has offered to uh, transcribe that whole thing for us today so thank you lawrence. <laughs> good luck <laughs> lawrence is lawrence is over in the uk as well so um all right that was absolutely incredible so um I'm just trying to think if, if we cover so much and in such a short period of time, you've just some playing, you did some teaching. We've learned a little bit about you. Uh, we got your uh, Instagram handle. We got we got your Patreon page. We'll get that in the chat as well. Um, what else? What else you got going on? What else are you excited about? What else do you want to share with us or what else? How else can we connect with you? 
Uh, so, so basically, if we're not friends on uh, Facebook uh, or Instagram, please put a put a friend request in. I will accept everybody who wants to be my friend. I need some friends. Yeah. No, seriously, uh, if you want to connect with me on Facebook, just put a request in, and I'll answer them as as they come through. And that way, uh, I tend to put a lot of what I'm doing uh, on Facebook, so you'll see where I'm appearing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is uh, January of next year. Um, and that's going uh, teaching on a cruise ship and that's part of the Fred Olsen cruise line that uh, runs from the UK uh, and that's going up to the Northern Lights uh, for 14 days and they wanted a ukulele teacher so I'm going to be teaching on that so that's going to be a first for me so yeah looking forward to that uh, March is going to be uh, the Gaithersburg ukulele festival uh, which I was supposed to go to in 2020 uh, but I got COVID, so I couldn't do it. Uh, also, after the Gaithersburg Festival, I'll be going to Funky Frets, I think it is, in Boyertown, Pennsylvania, and maybe Steel City Ukes um, as well, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So lots of things in the pipeline. Uh, some people are still a little bit worried about COVID and booking things too far in advance. So, But you will see anything that I'm doing uh, is going to be posted on my Facebook timeline. So please friend me, and then I'll be glad to share that with you. Uh, yeah, perfect. And and so and I don't know why the uh, San Diego is not on your uh, your to do list uh, to get over here uh, to the Ukraine the Pros warehouse here. Uh, we'll have I'm getting to... on the plane right now. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Um, actually, we have a we have a Yukon festival coming up on August 27th. So uh, yeah. uh, are you because uh, you, you're coming out here in October? Did you say you're coming to the somewhere in the States? Yeah, October is uh, uh, Austin and uh, hopefully Houston as well. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So our job would be to get you guys out to get you out here uh, yeah. for something. So we have uh, we have a we have a warehouse here. We got a teaching facility. We got mm -hmm. a, a little venue. So yeah, any any time you want, you're in the you know we can schedule something here. Um, we do have our Yukon Festival on the 27th, and we'd love to get you to be a part of uh, one of our festivals as well. It'd be a, yeah. an honor and a, to have you have you here for all this stuff. Um, I would love that. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, all right. So anyway, I want to thank. Uh, we're gonna. What we're gonna do here uh, is we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna stop the uh, the YouTube stream here in a second. We're gonna open it up to our our platinum members and let them ask you some questions if that works for you. It does. Yes. So yeah. thank you to everybody on YouTube for watching. Hope to meet up with you soon. If, I, right. if, you, do, if you do see me uh, live anywhere. Please come up and say hi. Don't be a stranger. I would like to meet people. Awesome. Awesome. So everybody on YouTube, I want to thank you. We have over 53 people uh, on here now. I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, make sure to follow Peter on all his stuff from Instagram to Facebook. Go check out his Patreon page as well. Um, we do have a uh, music read workshop coming up today at 1 o'clock. Um, we'll have a link of that if you want to join, come be a part of that. And if you like what we're doing here uh, on the Zoom call, come be a part of it. Become one of our Platinum members. Besides getting all the courses and everything, you get access to all these uh, Zoom calls, all the Q&As, and everything is recorded and posted. So if you miss something, you can go back and watch it. And we have such a fantastic, amazing community um, that we have over over there and you guys are an amazing community that we have right here on youtube as well so uh, i want to thank you all for that um you guys have a great rest of your day and um and look forward to more stuff we got coming up like i mentioned earlier we got our yukon festival on august 27th yukonpros.com slash yukon and uh and a lot of uh, live stuff coming up here in the next few weeks so have a uh, have a great day uh, and uh, you all are awesome and i'll see you guys here real soon all right, so now, Peter, for our, our 